Whether you fly or drive, you're into cars, trucks, boats, airplanes, quadcopters, helicopters, drones, you name it, your RC vehicle is going to utilize some type of a rechargeable battery in it, be it a main power battery or the battery that powers your radio equipment. There's a lot of different things that have gone on over the years in the world of RC technology where batteries are concerned, and it can get confusing. We're here to kind of help demystify what all this battery tech means. You know, what is a LiPo battery? What is a nickel metal hydride battery? What's a milliamp or a myamp or whatever you want to call it? We're going to walk you through some basic information to help you understand and make the best choices for your battery needs. So let's get started. One of the most common battery packs that you're going to find in cars, trucks, and boats are going to be what are called nickel metal hydride batteries. And that's these guys here. We have here, this is a six cell nickel metal hydride battery. This is basically what comes with many of the ECX, Viterra, and ProBoat ready to runs. Now I say six cells because if you look closely, you can kind of see the dimples in the shrink wrap here. There's actually six individual batteries that make up this battery pack. They're wired in such a way that it increases the total voltage of the battery. One of these batteries in here is rated at 1.2 volts. Times six, you get the total pack voltage of 7.2 volts. So that's how you get that. Now, let's kind of take a look at how a nickel metal hydride battery actually charges, because that's kind of key to its performance. As you can see at our start here, it goes and it's, you know, kind of jumps up quickly and then takes a real nice gradual uh, curve up to where it hits this point here. This is called your peak voltage. And peak voltage is exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's the utmost peak voltage that a battery pack will get when it's charging. Now if you look after that peak, there's a little bit of a line where it comes down. The way nickel metal hydride batteries are charged, they're actually slightly overcharged. What the charger does is detect this peak voltage and it measures the voltage and will only allow the voltage to drop so far. Once it drops to a certain point, it shuts off charging altogether, your battery is fully charged. Now one thing too with nickel metal hydride batteries is they actually will get slightly warm to the touch when you're charging. So if you ever wonder if a battery is fully charged, uh, go ahead and just you know, give it a real light touch and if it's warm, you're probably pretty good. Now that's how a nickel metal hydride battery charges. How it discharges, very linear here. As you can see, it's pretty much a constant drop throughout the entire discharger running curve. Um, you will kind of get a higher voltage to start with and then it'll plateau at different points throughout the discharge curve. But for the most part, it's a pretty straight shot down. Now in comparison, the other common battery that we use in the world of RC are called LiPo or lithium polymer batteries. Now there are other lithium technology based batteries out there. LiPo is still the most prevalent and that's why we're going to focus on that. Like I say, there are other ones. Don't sweat those right now. Let's just focus on LiPo for the time being. Now with LiPo batteries, the voltage per cell, remember the individual batteries that make up a battery pack, the individual voltage of the cells is higher to begin with than what you would get with a nickel metal hydride battery. Your average voltage is going to be 3.7 volts per cell. You can see just by that you're at you know, about one and a half times uh, the voltage on a LiPo cell versus a nickel metal hydride. So you need a lot fewer cells to make up the same voltage that you need on there. They provide a lot of power and a lot of current carrying capability in a very small package. You know, batteries such as this one here, which is common for uh, E-Flight and Blade helicopters, you know, super lightweight and we can get 8 to 10 minutes worth of flight out of a battery this small, where before we may have needed a battery this side, which is considerably heavier, and if you look at it too, this is an 1800 milliamp capacity battery, and we'll get into capacity in a little bit. This is an 800 milliamp capacity. So at that size, you're at almost half the runtime too. Pretty cool. Uh, they are lighter. They do require a different method of charging too. Let's take a look. We have another charging graph, this one to show you how a LiPo charges. As you can see here, your voltage climbs and hits your, your peak voltage fairly quickly. Peak voltage isn't how a LiPo battery is fully charged. It'll hit your voltage 
quickly, normally within the first 10 to 20 minutes of a charge. And from there, what your charger is doing, this is all adding runtime and capacity to your battery pack. So from that method alone, you can tell, hey, this is a different battery. It works differently. I need to charge it differently. Never mix nickel metal hydride batteries with LiPo chargers and never mix LiPo batteries with nickel metal hydride chargers. Use the proper charger for your battery type. Now another benefit of LiPo batteries, and uh, you can see on the chart here, is the voltage stays a lot flatter throughout the entire discharge curve. And this isn't you know, a, a perfect example of it, but as you can see, your voltage starts out here, it kind of plateaus and it, it maintains uh, its voltage, and it steps down, steps down, and then towards the end, it tends to drop fairly hard. So one of the main pieces of information is going to be the battery label. You know, this guy right here, what are all these numbers? What does this mean to me? What is 20C, 5000 mAh, 3C charge rate, 2S 7.4V? What does this all mean to me? Well, there's a lot of information here uh, depending on what your application is. First of all, all your information that you're going to need for making a proper battery choice is going to be found right here, which is really cool. The main thing that you should really do is use the the label on your battery pack as a tool, again, to make sure that you're getting the right battery for your right application. So one of the first things we're going to cover is voltage, and we talked about it a little bit already. Now voltage uh, on a nickel metal hydride battery is rated, like we said, at 1.2 volts per cell. Now when they're fully charged, they'll rate between like a volt and a half and 1.66 volts. So if you are monitoring the charging, let's say that I'm charging this six cell battery here. When it's fully charged, it may read anywhere between nine and 10 volts as a completely charged battery pack. So you can actually still get a lot of power and voltage out of a nickel metal hydride battery. Now LiPo batteries are measured at 3.7 volts per cell. And with that, you have a lot lighter package that still delivers a ton of power. A fully charged LiPo cell will read at 4.2 volts per cell. So you just take that and multiply it out to see what the voltage output of your battery system is going to be. One of the keys here too is to make sure that you stay within the voltage recommendation of your electronics. So for example, if I have Again, my six cell nickel metal hydride battery. This is what came with my car and truck. I can actually safely use a two cell 7.4 volt LiPo battery. I'm okay there. However, let's say that I want to raise, raise the stakes a little bit and say I want to go to this guy here. This is a three cell LiPo battery. Well, that same piece of electronics isn't going to live at that higher voltage. Some will. Check your manual. Now, the thing to remember too, when you increase voltage, if you are using a brushed motor, you will decrease the overall life of that motor. You're basically pushing more current through there. It's going to increase how fast uh, it wears out. No big deal, just something for you to be aware of. The next key feature on your battery packs that you want to be aware of is your capacity. And capacity is really a cool tool. With capacity, it's measured in MAH, or milliamp hours, how it's really pronounced. It's a measure of capacity, so the higher the milliamp rating on your battery pack, the longer it will run before it needs to be recharged. The way to think of it is 1,000 milliamps, like what we have here, is equivalent to one full amp. So a 5,000 milliamp battery, five amp. So that's an easy way to kind of do the math on that. The higher capacity, like I mentioned, the longer the runtime that you will get as you are out driving or flying. Now, higher capacity batteries, those with a higher milliamp hour rating, they are going to weigh a little bit more. So you'll have to kind of weigh out, no pun intended, what the advantages are of getting, and this is most often in uh, flight, if having more flight time is important or if it's important to have a lighter airframe that's more nimble. So it is a trade-off there that you will have to keep in mind as you are deciding what battery to use for your application. One of the really cool things about capacity is you can actually change your capacity up or down and be completely safe with your vehicle. So let's say for example we have here our Dynamite 1800 milliamp nickel metal hydride speed pack that came with our ECX vehicle. Ton of fun, but I want more runtime. So what I can do 
is I can easily upgrade to something like this 2400 milliamp nickel metal hydride battery pack from Dynamite. Now, I know by staying nickel metal hydride, my electronics can handle this. Uh, the main thing is now I'm going to get more runtime per charge uh, with this battery than with the one that it came with. Now, in the event, let's say that I want to upgrade again from my 1800 milliamp nickel metal hydride, and I want to upgrade to something such as this 4000 milliamp LiPo battery. The one thing I need to make sure is that my electronics are rated to handle the extra voltage uh, in this battery pack. Not only that, but my electronics also have some type of a cutoff built into it. So we have a really easy way to kind of wrap up capacity and what it means to you. Let's call this a 2000 milliamp glass. Use your imagination. Let's call this a 4000 milliamp glass. As you can see, I can hold about twice the juice in this capacity glass as what I can do in here. Now uh, you can easily use you know a 4000 milliamp glass when you only need 2000. All that you'll need to do is you know either discharge the battery to get it down when you're done using or you can charge it back up too. So that's a real easy way to kind of tell the difference between capacity is the more capacity you have the more you can hold. Next up on your battery label, we're going to talk about C rating, and there's two different types of C ratings on most battery packs. It's primarily a measure on LiPo batteries only. I've never really seen a nickel metal hydride battery that has a C rating on it. I look again at this label here, and I hate to keep picking on it, but we're going to pick on our 1800 milliamp Dynamite Speed Pack, there's nothing on here that indicates C rating. That's pretty normal. LiPo batteries really introduce the concept of C rating. And basically what C rating is, is it represents the maximum amount of continuous current that a battery can either output or input. Like I said, there's two different types of C ratings uh, that you have on a battery pack. As you increase the amp draw, so let's say that for if you're flying, if you're going to put a bigger prop on, if you're going to put a bigger motor in, if you're going to put a motor in with a higher KV rating, if you're going to gear up, if you've got uh, like an eight scale buggy or a four wheel drive short course car, if you're going to load the motor more, increase the C rating. What that will do is it will make sure that the battery is capable of outputting the amp draw that the electrical system is drawing from it. If you don't have a high enough C rating battery, you can damage the battery rather easily and rather quickly. You can ruin it, and worse, you could actually cause a fire. Now, with uh, C ratings, you can always go up on your C rating, just like on capacity. However, you never want to go below the minimum recommendation from your manufacturer. So, for example, I have a 20C Dynamite Reaction LiPo here and I have a 30C Dynamite Reaction LiPo battery here. I can interchange these without any problems whatsoever as long as my system says 20C or higher. If it says that I need a 30C battery, then I have to run this one, and I should not run this one here. Now the other C rating that we have, if we look closely here, this says 3C charge rate. When you increase your C rate on the charge side, that means you can charge at a higher rate than what's typical. Normally with a LiPo battery or nickel metal hydride battery, we recommend for safety's sake you charge at what's called 1C or 1 times capacity. And again, uh, if you think about your capacity, 5000 milliamps is equivalent to 5 amps, right? So you should charge a 5000 milliamp battery at 5 amps on your charger. A 3000 milliamp battery, charge at 3 amps. A 1500 milliamp battery, 1.5. You kind of get it at this point. Some batteries, such as the Dynamite Reactions that we have here, allow you to surpass 1C charging and do it safely. So, for example, these are a 3C charge rate. You can charge a 5000 milliamp LiPo at up to 15 amps and be safe. Now one thing we do highly recommend anytime you're charging a LiPo battery is to make sure you're using some type of LiPo safety protection sack. You also never want to charge a battery of any kind and leave it unattended. Accidents can happen and at least if you're there you can try to take the right steps and precautions to make sure that nothing gets out of control. 
Another way to think of C rating is think of the current flowing in and out of your battery pack like water. So if I have a 20C pipe, that's going to be this guy here. So I can flow a decent amount of water through it. But if I increase the size of the pipe, like to a 30C like I have here, I can move more water in less time. If I really need to move a lot in a short period of time, there's my 50C. That's the biggest pipe. So we've talked about C rating as far as the output of the battery. We've only glossed over C rating as far as what goes into your battery. So let's grab our 4000 milliamp LiPo that we have here. And again, on our label, we have 20C. We talked about what that is. 4000 milliamps, that's our capacity. We know that. 2S, 7.4 uh, volts. But the one up above here, 3C charge rate. What 3C charge rate means is I can actually charge this at a higher amperage and reduce the time it takes it to charge. So normally, if you remember, on a 4,000 milliamp battery, as we talked about earlier, you should charge at, you know, if you don't know what your charge rating is, you charge at 1C. For a 4,000 milliamp battery, that's 4 amps. With a 3C charge rate, that means I can charge this battery safely at 12 amps. The main benefit of that is it doesn't take as long to charge my battery packs. There's no real performance advantage to charging at a higher rate on a LiPo battery. However, there is one slight downside is it will wear your battery out a little bit faster. You won't get quite as many charge cycles through it uh, if you charge at a higher C rating as normal if you just charge at 1C. It's a minor trade-off. Uh, I mean, you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cycles before you would start noticing a drop off in performance, capacity, runtime, things along those lines. So if your battery is rated at a higher C rating for charging, feel safe that you can charge at a higher rate and reduce your time per charge. So normally you're talking one hour to charge at one C. Three times the charge rate, you're looking 20-25 minutes to charge your battery pack. So you get to have more fun faster. More fast fun faster, more fast fun faster. There we go. Now one thing with C rating when you're charging too, and we're going to go back to our main slide here, is I'm going to bring out again our 2000 milliamp glass and our 4000 milliamp glass. I can go and I can charge these up easily. I can go and use our charger that I pointed out to you guys earlier. Now if I'm charging at a 1C charge rate, I'm basically just going to open it up and pour it in. Now if I'm going to charge at a 3 or a 5 or you know, whatever charge rate that I'd want to charge at, it would be the equivalent of doing this. I've now put, in this case it's the charger, but in reality you'd be putting the battery under pressure. It's like trying to take a fire hose and filling up a container. Now some containers are designed to take that input. But if you try to overcharge a battery uh, such as this that wasn't designed to it, you're not only going to wind up with a mess, you could cause a fire. Again, you always want to follow your manufacturer's ratings on the label for C rating for charging rate. Uh, you can never go wrong by sticking to a 1C charge rate if you don't know what you're doing. 5,000 milliamp battery, 5 amps. 3,000 milliamp battery, 3 amps. But if your battery is rated to charge at a higher rate, feel confident that you can do so. But again, like we mentioned, make sure that you are always using a LiPo protection safety stack anytime you're charging and never charge a battery unattended. We hope that you found this battery tutorial helpful. There's a lot of information out there and we've tried to break it down into the simplest terms possible. And there's even more to learn out there. That's the kind of cool thing about our hobby. It's always developing, evolving, and changing. To keep up to date on the latest technology, you'll want to make sure to follow us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash horizon hobby. We've got a great community there. If you have questions, feel free to ask away right there. You can also go ahead and like and subscribe to this video to keep up to date with the latest and greatest from Horizon Hobby and all that we're up to, whether we're talking about batteries, chargers, motors, flying, driving, you name it. You're going to find the latest information by doing that. We hope that you found this educational and informative. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.